for today's um, video vlog, um, I'll be talking about the movie, um, the local Filipino movie, um, Kita Kita. Do you know what Kita Kita means? Kita is like, um, you can see, and then Kita is like, I can see you. So Kita Kita is, I can see you. So, um, that film is actually um, a recent film in Philippine theater. Um, it's about it's about um, a woman moving to Japan, and she um, and she moves she moves to the city of Tokyo. So um, she she gets blind because um, due to stress for some stress reasons, and um, yeah. The cinematography of the film is actually very nice, especially um, the part um, where they showcase um, the different locations in Japan. Just like um, when they were, when um, one of the protagonists, the the, the male protagonist, um, he he was roaming around um, the, the city of Sapporo. So yeah. Um, the story was um, she, the the main character, she she went to Japan and to find a better job, but then suddenly she um, she was she caught her she caught her boyfriend or fiance cheating on her with a close friend, and um, that was like the start of the conflict of the film. Where was I? Oh yeah, um, analysis. All right. So I'd like to analyze this film, this local Tagalog film, with the um, the the theory of John Paul Sartre, which is um, existentialism, which is all about bad faith. I can say that the movie is actually all about bad faith because um, one of the protagonists, the female, um, it was really bad faith that she actually met a. a a man, a lover, who cheated on her, and that's actually really bad faith, as usual. And um, it can also, it can also, another bad circumstance was that um, she fell blind. But yeah, I can say that her blindness was actually a blessing in disguise because she was able to meet someone. She was able to meet someone important to her because of that um, bad faith. So I, I guess that I guess bad faith isn't um, all that bad and stuff. But like, yeah. So she she was able to meet the male protagonist who also suffered the same bad faith, which was which was also being cheated on by his girlfriend. So um, I guess it was um, two bad fates that actually brought um, people together so I think it's actually a, a good fate in the end so um, we can actually also say that um, another another point in existentialism would be um, the, the use of workers to um, exploit, exploit um, ex in exploiting people <laughs> to um, get to get a um, profit because like um, the the two protagonists moving to um, Japan from their the Philippines just to get um, a higher salary so that they can support um, their families back home just like what's happening now recently in the Philippines that our biggest export is actually our um, overseas Filipino workers where and they work in other countries just so that they can support their families. Just like the two characters, the two protagonists in um, the film Kita Kita. Yeah. And um, we can also say that um, the film is about is about uh, love because um, it it's actually ironic because um, both of the characters, um, they they suffered like immensely. Like um, the male protagonist uh, went through poverty in Japan, but then it was the female who 
it was the female protagonist who helped him get back on his feet. So he was able to return the favor to um, his um, quote unquote savior by by um, by um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, um, he was able to get um, give return the favor to his to his um, savior by um, saving her when she was the one who needed help the most. Just like when he was in poverty and she was the one who actually tried to cheer him up. Um, but what's ironic is that he he took advantage of her her blindness so that she couldn't see his um, face. Because if you can actually notice in the movie, the male protagonist isn't actually that good looking. But I guess that's what the, um, the filmmakers were after, that um, even, <laughs> even the, um, the people like, uh, I'm not trying to be mean, but like, people like them have um, a chance to fall in love with beautiful like, women or beautiful men, I don't know, yeah, like, that's how it goes. That's probably the point of the um, the filmmaker, the film writer, and the directors, uh, and all the team. Yeah. So, um, going back to the film and its cinematography. So, um, if you guys can actually watch the film, then you would probably notice um, the the the. Um, the kind of elements such as the sequence. Actually, I think the sequence of the film is effective because um, it starts with um, the present and then it goes back to the past. But then, but then throughout the film, um, there will be like a flashback. The, fla the flashback will actually have to help you understand um, that it was actually um, the male protagonist who was the the, the man in poverty that. So that's how that's how the, the uh, sequence actually um, works in the film. Because it's not it, it's not like the typical um, start to finish or like beginning to end, but it's more of a jumping start um, sequence, like um, from present to past to present to past to present to the the beginning of the entire film, but with a different point of view, shifting points of view. So. Yeah, that's why I see it works. So, um, for the other element, which would be, um, <clears throat> which would be the um, sound, like the soundtrack. Um, yeah, I guess the um, soundtracks are actually really chosen well for the film. Just like um, you can see in the film that there are some uh, Japanese um, Japanese songs, Japanese music. And then also the um, the uh, with regard to the uh, sequence again, <laughs> yeah, I really love the sequence because it really works well. Um, another point about the uh, sequence would be that um, like part of the flashback, like um, she she reminisces re reminisces her her relationship with her with the man who actually cheated on her like by her I mean um, the female protagonist yeah she she reminisced those times and then what was actually nice was that she brought um, she brought um, the male protagonist to um, the same places where her her previous lover actually um, brought her to like the bell tower where they rang the bell on um, like nine times and they shouted something they shouted something yeah I, I'll probably show you the clip in a while because I don't really remember um, I haven't watched the film in like a month or a month yeah so um, for other elements of the cinematic analysis would be on the and probably the um, symmetry since uh, the directors tried to make it um, 
as symmetrical as possible. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's because um, everything that I, everything was really symmetrical. Like when I noticed the film at the house and everything, it had a matching color palette and there was, there was actually no presence of anything like, uh, like, annoying, just like a, a really noisy truck or something. But yeah, they did live in the, one of the quiet provinces of Japan. So, yeah, it actually fits with the story, including the set. Yeah, I pretty much enjoyed that. Well, reasons why you should watch the film. Hmm. One, it deals with um, love, and you know, everybody loves love. Everybody talks about love. So, um, another reason would be, um, you could actually see um, Japan, like, without actually having to go to Japan. I mean, like, a ticket to Japan is really expensive, and lifestyle in Japan is really expensive. So, and another thing is, it actually makes you socially aware of what, what um, overseas workers in Japan are actually experiencing. So, it deals about love, to recap, and um, it deals about um, the cinematography is actually nice, and then another would be um, it makes you socially aware, and it also lets you get to travel to Japan without actually going to Japan. So yeah, um, I really hope you guys um, learned from my um, constant bickering about the film or like not really bickering but like constant talking about the film so yeah i really hope you could actually um take time to watch it for a bit or not even for a bit and you can um you can actually see the um the film with uh, english subtitles because yeah they have some japanese um they have japanese um, words which we don't really understand unless we're actually japanese yeah so, um, I really hope you enjoy the film, and, um, yeah, I really hope I can actually, um, show you the spots that the set, actually, and the, the venues, but, yeah, I don't really have enough time, nor do I have enough money to actually go to Sapporo <laughs> and Tokyo, so... That will be all for now. I really hope to see you all soon. Ally out! Sa amin ako, tapos kumakain ako ng ramen ng ganitong kaingay. Malamang dinago ka na ako nung nanay ko. <laughs> ako nga kung nasa Pinas tayo, tapos ganito ako kumain, malamang tinakbuhan na ako ng admirers ko eh. Wow! Anong weather ngayon? Winter na ba? Ang ginawa, ang lakas mo eh, ha? Kunyari ka pa, eh, mas may abang ka pa sa akin. Siya nga pala. Mahili ka ba sa bulaklak? Hindi ka kayo mo no! Oy, oy, oy. Sabi ko pa nga ba yan yung nasa isip mo, eh? Huwag kang assuming na natanong ko lang, ha? Eh, bakit defensive ka? Nagtatanong lang din ako. O, bakit? Kapag ba niligawan kita, sasagutin mo ako. Eh, bakit mo naman ako liligawan? Bulag ka ba? Hindi. Pero yung feelings ko, hindi bulag. Actually, sensitive ako sa lahat ng mga may gusto sa akin. Yabang mo? Ops. Hindi ako mayabang. Humble ako. Hindi ko nga pinagpapapansin lahat ng mga patay na patay sa akin ng mga chicks sa lalawigan namin eh. Nagpuntahan nga sa bahay lahat. Sabay-sabay sabi ko, sagdali lang, wait lang, wait lang ha. Kasi, taken na ako. Taken ka Lino. Sa'yo.
Naiingi ako talaga. Sandali ah. Sandali lang. Sandali. Kaya mo ba? Kaya ko. Kaya ko. Kaya ko. Wait lang. Wait lang. Uy. Alalay. Alalay. Kanan. 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 Oh, yeah. Sandali. Sandali. Bulag ako. Hindi ka pingi.